I've been creating YouTube videos for about seven years now, and I can honestly tell you that it has changed my life. Here are five things that I've learned as a developer from creating YouTube videos. All right, so as I said, I've been creating YouTube videos for several years now, and when I started, I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't, I didn't have a vision of becoming a YouTuber. I just wanted to put a video or a series of videos out that other people could reference. I was giving these workshops and I was explaining the same things over and over again, and I figured, Instead of uh, instead of people getting behind and having to ask me questions, why don't I just point them to a video? It'd be that much easier. And if I do a group of 30 people, they could all individually go and watch the videos. So that's really where it started. And then I had uh, at Microsoft at my job uh, when I started out of college. After doing that, people kind of saw that that was a little that was kind of successful. And I ended up doing more videos and different um, different reasons and different types of videos. Anyway, I kind of left that alone. In the last three years, I've really taken this YouTube channel seriously. I've really been consistent and I've really learned a ton. I mean, so much. I can't tell you how much of an impact it's had on my career. I wouldn't be a developer advocate today if I didn't have a YouTube channel that I could say, like, you're looking for someone to be an advocate to create content. Well, here's my YouTube channel full of 100 videos or 200 videos that I've done uh, to show you that I know how to do this stuff. So it's influenced my career, the things I've learned, uh, the actual jobs that I've had, stuff like that. So I want to show you the five things that I've learned uh, from creating YouTube videos. The last thing I want to tell you about first is I have a YouTube for developers ebook. So everything that you want to know about creating YouTube videos and getting started with creating YouTube videos and the why behind it. So kind of uh, an extra insight or more insight on top of what you'll see today. Uh, YouTube for developers.com. You can check out that ebook for 10 bucks. Uh, link below in the description if you're interested in checking it out as well. So let's start with the first thing that I've learned. And this may seem uh, really self-explanatory and that's totally fine, but how to edit and produce videos. And this is not, uh, this is actually a pretty uh, interesting deep topic where it's, it's not just about uh, sitting in front of a camera and telling you what to do. There's a lot of preparation that goes inside of that. And so from the recording perspective, there's uh, me really focusing in on what's the demo, what's the purpose of a given video, who's going to watch this and why. And what do I want to make sure that I get across in this video? Obviously, in, in this specific video, I, I took notes on here are the five things that I've learned, here are the individual details of that to make sure that I get those across to you. So I learned how to kind of prepare myself to, to record videos. I've learned a lot about equipment, microphones and lights, and I've got different cameras and I've experimented with different pieces of equipment and how to fine tune all of that stuff. And I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot now. Then comes like the editing process where I feel like I'm not the best. I'm definitely not the best editor. Editor, I'm not the most creative editor, but I at least know how to splice some things together to do a few animations, to add some graphics, or to put a piece of text on the screen, that sort of stuff. So all in all, it's 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 a level of creativity. It's a level of uh, structure, I guess, creativity and structure, and uh, just a process that is different than writing code, but it's still also really valuable because I get to get inside of a different mindset but it's also something that I really enjoy. So lesson number one that I've learned or the first thing that I've learned is just how to edit and produce videos, which has actually been pretty impactful for me. Now, the second thing I've learned from creating videos, recording uh, YouTube videos, is to be a better communicator and teacher. So the communicator part, I imagine, is pretty straightforward. Um, as I create videos, you see a lot of me in front of a camera. You hear a lot of me talking about the things that I'm doing. And honestly, just through repetition over the course of, I don't, somebody can check and let me know in the comments how many videos I have at this point. But after doing 100 and 200 videos, obviously you start to get more comfortable with actually being on camera and actually talking about the things that you're doing. So that's a skill that's really valuable. If you look at being inside of a company and kind of growing as a leader, especially in a technology space, they need people who are able to explain concepts, technical concepts to people who are not as technical. You need to be able to relate to people to be able to get down on their level and explain to them the things that are going on. That's a really important skill if you look to progress in your career. And I get to practice and get better at that every single day from creating YouTube videos, which is really impactful for me. The other aspect of that is not only am I a better communicator, but it also makes me a better teacher. And so I'm a better teacher because I have an understanding of what it's like to be on the other side of YouTube videos. I watch a ton of videos myself, so I know what to look for. I also get lots of feedback on video. So comments below if you have any suggestions on things that I'm missing out on my tutorials and videos that I create, but I get lots of those already and I take those things seriously. So I get these like really fine points of if somebody says, hey, your your code is too small 
well, all right, I need to make sure that I'm zoomed in so that people that are watching on their phone, for example, can see the code hopefully well enough. It's not going to be perfect because phones are so small, but that's a thing that like a lot of people don't know. Uh, making sure that my audio levels are good so you can see and hear, making sure that when I do my video embedded on a screen, so if I show like picture in picture, making sure that if I'm highlighting a piece of code that's in the bottom right, that I move my video out of that corner so that you can actually see it. And then also things like how to structure courses and series and things on videos and how to point to resources and the resources that people need. If you follow a mini course of mine on YouTube, you know there's a GitHub repo. There's usually either a folder or a branch for each step along the way. And then there's any other additional boilerplate code, starter code, or other resources that you need all listed in one place so that I know you have access to all those things. You have everything you need to go through that content. So I actually am a teacher. Uh, I've taught a boot camp at nights here in Memphis, and then I'm actually teaching one virtually now for a class that's based in Northwest Arkansas. And I get to take all the things I've learned from creating videos and apply that and use that back and put that back into me teaching, like actually teaching other people how to learn to program. So I've definitely become a better, a stronger communicator, and I've definitely become a better, more knowledgeable uh, teacher in that regard as well. Now, the next thing up is uh, maybe I don't know if you really think about this perspective or not, but with creating YouTube videos, I don't just create YouTube videos on things that I already know 100%. I sign myself up mentally or like I record it in my backlog to do topics that I either don't know yet or uh, don't know that well or things like that so that I can force myself to learn new technologies. This is actually a trick that speakers do as well. If I apply for a conference and I uh, write in with a talk that I've never given and I get accepted... You're going to be, I'm going to be damn sure that I'm prepared to give that talk by the time the actual due date comes for the conference. So it's kind of a way to force yourself to learn whatever that stuff is. So just at a high level, some of the technologies that I've really uh, enjoyed working with and getting into. Uh, Next.js is one that you've heard me, if you're on the channel a lot, heard me talk about a lot. I use Gatsby for my personal site. Both of those are frameworks built on top of React. I've done styled components for CSS, JavaScript, or CSS and JavaScript, Tailwind CSS for utility-based CSS. FaunaDB and uh, Airtable are two databases I've worked with recently a lot. Cloudinary for media management, storage, and optimization on images and videos and that sort of stuff. I've learned a lot about VS Code and configurations and settings and extensions because I've created a lot of content around that. So by me creating videos, by me forcing myself to create videos on topics that I don't yet know or don't yet know that well, I get to learn about all these different technologies, which makes me that much more knowledgeable of the ecosystem of just web development. I know I may not know how to do everything, but I know a lot about the different pieces that are out there and I could then put them together just from having that breadth of knowledge across the different spaces that are out there. So then my, my fourth lesson, the fourth thing I've learned is how to market myself and my content. And this is something that I, one, I'm still learning. So I've learned how to do it. Not that I'm done learning how to do it. I've got a lot more to learn. But it's something that's not necessarily natural for me. When I create a YouTube video, it's not necessarily natural for me to go on Twitter and then share it. It's not natural for me to send it in a newsletter. It's not natural for me to send it on LinkedIn and that sort of stuff. And the reason is some of it, you don't want to you don't want to feel like you're trying to push stuff on people. You don't want to feel salesy, but also your videos are not going to get viewed and your, your materials, your content is not going to get viewed if you don't share it and if other people don't share it for you. So I've learned how to get better at that, how to feel more comfortable, how to share things on Twitter in a more creative way that people actually respond to, how to include my content in newsletters. People follow my newsletter because they want to follow the things that I do and the things that I have to say. So I include videos at the bottom of my newsletter, which you can sign up for at jamesqquick.com slash newsletter if you're interested. And so I've, I've become more comfortable with that. I've become better at social media. I've become better at being consistent and engaged on Twitter and just being like a genuine member of community. And by doing that, people trust the, the content that I put out. So again, it's not, it's not natural to be able to do this for me, but it's something I'm learning. And especially with the goal of, of making money off of content. I've already done a few courses. I've made a decent amount of money, which is really cool. But really the next level of that content is me being able to market and, and ship it in a way that you look at it and you say, that's the thing that I really want to invest my money in. And I feel like I've done some of that, but I can get a whole lot better. And that's where I see the people who do this for a living. I feel like they do that part better than me. And that's one of the biggest gaps for me of trying to continue to work on how do I market? How do I learn about all the ins and outs of marketing and ads and, and all this sort of stuff to, to really push content in a way that people will find useful, I hope. So that's been really cool for me. It's something I'm a little uncomfortable with, but I've certainly learned a ton along the way with content in general, but especially with my YouTube videos. 
Now, the last part of this is kind of similar to that. It's the idea of how to be an entrepreneur, how to embrace that entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. And what I mean is now I have YouTube videos, but I also am doing sponsored YouTube videos. People are reaching out for me to me to do sponsor videos or sponsor blog posts, which means I get money for that, right? And I'm pretty picky about the sponsors that I take. I don't take sponsors for things, technologies, companies that I don't believe in. So if you see a sponsor video from me, it's because I actually believe in the stuff that I'm recording and I believe in that technology. It may not be the thing that I use all the time, but I believe in that as being a very viable option that you should know about and you should be able to gauge whether or not you want to use. So I get to make money off of uh, off of sponsored videos. That's really cool to have people reach out to me and ask me, hey, can I pay you to create a video? That's a pretty uh, inspiring thing, I think. Also, I make money from YouTube ads and this is not a ton. It's a few hundred bucks a month, but that's really nice side income to have and really have, again, that entrepreneurial mindset of like, I have a full-time job, I have a salary, but I also get to make this extra money in these different places. That's really cool. And the last part of that is being an entrepreneurial in terms of having paid content. So I've got a couple of courses. I mentioned the YouTube for developers ebook for 10 bucks. If you wanna learn everything that I know about YouTube, how to get started and more of these kind of details uh, and why you should get started, uh, check out the YouTube for developers ebook at youtubefordevelopers.com, link below as well. That's a way for me to make money. I also have my React and Serverless course. You can check that out. I also have my VS Code course, which is on Udemy. I've got these things that are able not to make a ton of money, but they're able to make side additional income. And I can't tell you how amazing of a feeling it is to know that not only am I worth money in terms of my full-time job, but my skills and my time are worth money to other people for other things as well. And I, I like every time I see somebody buy something that I've put out, it's such an amazing feeling. Every time a sponsor reaches out or someone reaches out to sponsor a video, that's such a flattering thing. And now I have this mindset of, I can make money. I can not only make money for other people by working for a company, I can also work or work for myself. I can also make money for myself by creating the content that I do. And ultimately one day, maybe I actually get to do that full time. It's not now, uh, maybe in a few years that is the case, but for now I get to have a good job that I really enjoy as a developer advocate at All Zero. I then get to create content on my own that I have a lot of fun doing. And then I also get to make money off of that. And I can't tell you uh, how empowering of a feeling that is. I also know that I can use all of my YouTube videos in my channel, my platform, as a way to advocate for myself in jobs that I apply for in the future. Like if people wanna know if I'm a good communicator, go watch one of these 200 videos. If you wanna know if I know my technologies, go watch one of my 200 videos. If you wanna know if I know how to create videos, go watch one of my 200 videos. I can't tell you how much creating YouTube videos, running a YouTube channel has benefited me in my career. I'm curious for those of you that are out there and stuck around uh, for this to this point, have you ever thought about creating YouTube videos? And if you have, what's stopping you? Um, because I think the biggest hurdle for people is just to create that first video. There's a lot of imposter syndrome that comes with it. There's a lot of uh, fear of negativity, but I can tell you one of the best things you can do is just create that first video. You'll probably see that it's not near as bad as you thought it would be. And maybe you get to the point where you've done a ton of videos like me and you see all these benefits really come to life for yourself. So if that is uh, interesting for you, check out youtubefordevelopers.com for the ebook. I'd love to have you read that and, and give any feedback on that as well. Leave comments below if you are interested or if you have started a YouTube channel, how that's been for you or what you expect it to be like for you or what you would like to learn in your YouTube channel. Anyways, thanks for uh, checking out the video, letting me rant a little bit about my experience on YouTube. I appreciate it as always. If you enjoyed it, like it, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in future videos, but for now, I'll catch you later.